Okay, guys, I'm just trying to introduce you to how to handle building the bridge, uh, the bridge truss in Inventor. Uh, let's just use this as an example of the bridge that maybe I wanted to design. So I wanted something in MD solids. You can see I've got my 12 inches um, across my grid. I didn't use the full six inches I was allotted. I went up four. So keep that in mind that my bridge, I'm trying to keep something uh, kind of easy to follow, is four high, 12 wide. And I've got joints across the top every two inches, but not at the ends. So that would be two, four, six, eight, ten inches across, or sorry, joints um, every two inches. But here we've got, you know, every two inches, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so let me give you a quick preview of the big steps in Inventor. All right, so step one, assuming you guys kind of understand Inventor as well. Um, you're going to just make a sketch with the general dimensions. I do put a little quarter inch um, kind of vertical edge before I turn that diagonal. But you can see I've dimensioned it so that my tops, the top corners are two inches in from the ends. So that one's two inches, that's 10 inches from the left, 12 inches, etc. And I've got my overall height set. Okay. Um, this line here is actually not needed, but I'm just kind of showing you that's where the deck is eventually going to run. Okay, so basically I just want the um, outer profile here. Okay, step two is going to be to use the offset tool with that profile. So the offset tool is right here, and choose, using that tool on the outer perimeter, um, you can define a quarter inch as your offset and it'll create that member around okay the third step is to go and create points these points represent where my joints are going to be so i've already got the corners but i need to come and get these now this one is the one that's just a little tricky because of doing the offset so if we go into the sketch you can see that on the offset this corner right here is not in line with that okay so um what i did is i uh, if you've used Inventor, you know, using the point tool and kind of sliding along, you can find the middle. All right. And um, and I found, basically, I, I aligned, this point here is aligned to this. I kind of saw where it gave me that dotted line to tell me I was aligned to it, and then I clicked there. So I started with this one, the middle, and this one. Then I used my vertical constraint to say this one has to stay aligned to this point. Okay, by clicking once here and once here. Okay. Then, um, these were the midpoints. They stayed aligned. Same thing here. I did vertically align these, but I needed to get this point centered between these two. And we're, we're not going to have the exact same dimensions every two inches as we've kind of started to create members with some thickness. And so, um, what I did is I measured the distance between these two points, I used the dimension tool, and went from here to here, and I found that it was 3.850. And then I set the dimension from here to here to be exactly half of that 3.850. And then repeated the same thing here. Okay, so that this point is centered between these two. Alright, so that gave me points. Next up, I connected all of those I basically drew in where I wanted my members to be so I connected the joints with lines and I simply made them construction lines so I went through used the line tool connected connected all the way down and then afterwards I just used I selected one held the control key selected another I'm holding control key along the way highlighting all of them and then I right clicked and I made them construction lines there I just turn them off but I'll go back that just makes them dashed okay so I can see where they're going to be. Step five, I started drawing in the members. And this one's just a little bit trickier. I did the vertical ones first and then the diagonal one. Let's come to the other side and kind of repeat the process. So I use the line tool and I want to make sure I get a constraint for the point to be on this line. I need to make sure I have closed loops and I actually get good joints for my lines to come together. So I clicked here click down here and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna make it special yet I'm just I, I do want to make sure I don't get any like 
coincident constraints, I guess. So I have to be careful I don't get like a green dot or something. So I'm going to click here, and then I do want to use the parallel tool to make sure that this line can stay parallel to where, um, where I've put the construction line. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, then I'm going to dimension that to be exactly an eighth of an inch from the construction line. The construction line is intended to be the center of my beam. Okay, so we're growing our member that actually has real thickness in both directions equally. Okay, so there you go. So I repeat that process again right here. And I may get a nice perpendicular constraint. I don't know. I think it did create it. Those. You definitely want to make sure that things are dimensioned and constrained so that as you're doing this, the only thing that can move are the new lines. If you don't create dimensions along the way, um, instead of the line segment that you created moving to where you want it, you may have other things start moving around on you. Okay, so here's the next one, the diagonal. This one's the one that's maybe just a little trickier. I'm going to start. I can clearly see that if a member's on the, you know, the edge that's on this side, as it comes up, it's going to interfere, kind of um, intersect with, with this segment. So I'm going to go ahead and click there to get my constraint. And I'm not going to even worry about coming all the way down, because you know what? I'm not exactly sure where that 0.125 is going to run me into here or here. I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to make a segment. I'm going to make it parallel to the construction line. I'm going to dimension it to have the right offset of 0.125. I'm going to turn off the dimension tool by right clicking and saying OK. And then I'm going to drag the endpoint and see where is it going to intersect. Let me zoom in so we can really see. Because I need to create a constraint on the correct line. Whoop, had I guessed here, I would have been wrong and it wouldn't be able to be parallel and the right distance. So now I'm going to use my coincident constraint and say this point needs to be stuck on this line, just like so. And that was really the tricky part. So I'm going to repeat line segment. Now I do know that this one's going to hit up here because it's symmetrical. Um, I can kind of use that. Uh, let's make it parallel first, parallel, parallel. And now we'll use my dimension tool and get this to be the 0.125. There you go. So now I've created three more of my members just like you created those three I would come in and do this vertical and then the two diagonals um, you also could you know in theory I guess could have just done um, just this one and this one and then I could later come back and mirror my whole truss and not have to go through and create all these lines so don't forget about that mirroring tool is pretty powerful um, so finish and then step six was going to be showing to extrude it so let's just even show what that looks like. You finish the sketch, that green check mark, and then you choose the extrude button, and then you come in and you choose the profiles that you want to extrude. Um, the distance I'm going to have is 5 mm, 5 millimeters. That's the thickness of our plywood that we're going to use. And then I come in and I select all these members. Now, I don't have all of them yet. Oop, I got the triangle. I'm holding the control key now to look for what's already selected to deselect it. So I can see that. I'm going to click like that. So if you accidentally select a region you didn't want, use the control key to go back and find it and deselect it. So that gives you a glance of what it's going to start to look like. Okay.